Hey everyone, Madrybred here. Pokemon Platinum with only one Gibble was way, way harder than I thought it would be. So let's go ahead and do one that will probably be exactly as hard as I think it will be. Today's the day that we figure out would I be able to beat Pokemon Platinum with a team of only one Pidgey? Pidgey's stats are much less than even that of a first form starter Pokemon, so it's fair to say that we aren't going to be good at anything. Pidgey's strongest stat is its speed, and it's pretty hard to call a base speed of 56 anything but underwhelming. Our level of moves are shockingly terrible, with our best flying move being Wing Attack, a move that is absolutely identical to Peck in Gen 1. Not only that, but Gust is normal type, so although we get the same type attack bonus, it's still awful. Even by TM, we don't get any extra type coverage. Every attacking move is either normal or flying, but I guess at least we get the same type attack bonus on everything? Minor positive. Like always, I'm writing the script as I go through with the challenge, so all this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I'm gonna say that I can, but that is gonna require that I do something that might be a glitch, and might not? This is gonna be a weird one. Let's explain the rules! In combat, I can only use Pidgey. I'll need other Pokémon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokémon in battle. No glitches or exploits... I hope? Look, it's Gen 1, man, it just happens. No items in battle, only Pokéballs and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. So right off the bat, I use the Universal Pokémon Randomizer to replace Bulbasaur with Pidgey, so that I can do the whole run with it. I name him Spiro because that's hilarious. Looks like we start with Gust and Sand Attack, although I remember that in Gen 1, Gust was just 40 power normal type move, so it's not going to be any stronger in Viridian Forest than Tackle would be. Speaking of, we have to grind in Viridian Forest. As usual, the first gym leader is Brock. He's got great defense and we only have physical moves, so I'm going to need to get strong enough to beat him. We have Sand Attack, so we could potentially last a long time against him, but we only have so many Gusts, and by the time that we're using Struggle, it really wouldn't go well. Not only that, but Bide can't miss, so Onyx would probably mess us up. Grinding here is easy, but it's slow, and you have to avoid the Weedles when you can, since often they'll poison you, and you waste a lot of time going to go heal again. And you really do need to go heal, because fainting in Gen 1 makes you lose half of your current money. It's really easy to be broke by the end of Gen 1 runs if you're not careful. By the time we get to Brock's Rock Gym, we're level 13. It starts pretty good with Tackle missing tons as we get our Sand Attacks in, but he also maxes out his Defense Curls, so I can't do more than one damage unless we crit, and I never crit. We only managed to whittle him down to half health before we ended up going down. I think that we're going to need to be much stronger before we can win this. A few levels later, and I decide to fight the optional rival instead, just to see how well we match up. At level 15, we surprisingly totally crushed him, though. I don't think we're ready for this, though, so I decide to level up two more times. Time for Brock again. This time we're level 17. Same strategy, of course, ruin the accuracy and then gust over and over and hope for a victory. To cut a very long and uneventful battle short, we actually did take out Geodude, although we lost 20 health in the process, leaving us with only 25 health left to deal with Onyx. I was paranoid about Onyx using Bide, so I sand attacked three times right away until he failed his first one, then I started using Quick Attack to deal some damage. Quick Attack and Gust do the same damage in this gen, but I wanted to make sure that he couldn't have any chances of outspeeding me and using Bide while I was attacking. Naturally though, we ran out of sand attacks to waste during his bide turns, so he had to hit us eventually. It took entire minutes of trading weak shots, but eventually we won thanks to a lucky crit when he was about to throw a bite at us that could have easily brought us to red health. That was one of those battles that just could have gone either way. The trainers on the way to Mount Moon this run are extra annoying because we rarely one-shot them and they poison us all the time, but I need every last bit of experience I can get before I move on. The grinding after getting to Celadon is pretty terrible if you can't beat your rival yet, and I doubt I'm ready for that, so let's get the levels early. On our way though, I took the Helix Fossil. I knew that if I didn't say what I took, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think about it, everyone ask anyway. Comments are good for following me on Twitter. Next is the Water Gym, and it starts weird. We get crit with Water Gun for a bit of damage, less than I thought, and we take him out with a regular quick attack followed by a critical one. But Starmie is a beast. Even with us critting our first quick attack, we hardly do anything to it. We're just not ready yet. Let's try a rival instead. Pidgeotto was first, so we traded some quick attacks and gusts until we won the exchange with about half of our health left. Second was Abra, so I just one-shot it, then keep spamming Quick Attack for Rattata. It only hits us twice though, so we have 23 health left for Charmander. Thanks to a lucky crit and him just going for Leer, we won with no problem. 
After taking out all the trainers to the north, I come back to the water gym. Even after a crit making short work of Staryu, Starmie is still just too much to handle. We had it all the way down to red health when it took us out this time, so I'm sure we're almost ready. Two levels later and we completely breeze through the battle because Misty decided that Bubble Beam is lame and Tackle is way cooler. I probably could have won that fight at level 20 if she fought like that the first time. With that over, I go ahead and start fighting the trainers on the SSN. I think I might be able to beat the rival already, but I'd be missing out on a lot of experience points that I'll for sure need later in the game if we don't fight the SSN trainers, so I take my time and make sure to finish all of them off. As I expected, we totally crushed our rival, so at least my prediction was right. I was dreading the electric gym for obvious reasons, but I decided it was worth at least a shot since my level is pretty good. It ended up being far easier than I expected though, mostly because of his bad move choice. Raichu could have taken us down if he just used some thunderbolts, but apparently thundershock and x-speed were much more interesting to surge. After that I pass through rock tunnel pretty easily, and rush to Celadon to get the HM for fly. This is going to be way more useful than a wing attack. I go after the grass gym while I'm in town and naturally it's no problem, although it's worth pointing out that even with Fly and a big level advantage, we aren't able to one-shot some of her team. Pidgey is still about as weak as an onyx when it comes to attack power, so this could have gone very wrong if we got hit by a sleep powder. Next is time for Giovanni in the basement of the Team Rocket hideout. Onyx wasn't too bad because it just kept going for Rock Throne, we sand attacked a few times, but he used a guard spec so I couldn't completely ruin his accuracy. Rock Throw only has 65 base accuracy in Gen 1 though, so it's really terrible. It took ages to take him down, and second was Rhyhorn, who's another rock type, so it takes ages. I didn't get as many sand attacks in on him, and we took a lot of damage over the course of the fight from Horn Attack, but we still won. Last is Kang's Kun, and we only got one sand attack in before we just had to start attacking. We could have easily lost from a crit, but he ended up using Rage, an absolutely terrible move in Gen 1, so we won the fight. The rival fight in Pokemon Tower goes incredibly cleanly with me being able to pretty easily overpower his team. I don't think he's going to be hard until the Silphco rival fight. Pokemon Tower itself isn't too bad because flying hits ghosts. I can't explain to you why flying hits ghosts, but it does. If my Pidgey attempted to tackle these ghosts, he'd miss. But if he attempted to tackle from high up, that would hit because it's called fly. Who's that guy from Ghost Hunters again? Zack Baggins? Something like that? Someone get Zack Baggins on the horn. Let him know that you can take out ghosts if you attack from above. That seems to be the weak point. You know, I was gonna make a joke about it, but uh, I think Pokemon actually is less fake than Ghost Hunters. <laughs> As I was fighting the trainers in the poison gym, I quickly realized that I probably wasn't going to breeze my way through this like I did with the rival fight. We really aren't that overleveled anymore, and evolved Pokemon are becoming more common. When I get to Koga, it starts weird. His first coughing probably could have really messed me up, but he just kept using X attack over and over, so he went down. Muck was awful though. He has Minimize, a move that's basically double team. Double team makes sense for me to use because I'm usually doing six on one fights where I'm using some terrible Pokemon and no items in battle. Koga uses it on an evolved muck when he has three other Pokemon and loves spamming items in battle. Basically what I'm saying is he fights like a jerk and that's how he beat me, so I'll have to come back at a higher level. I go to Sylph Co next since it's a pretty solid place to level up. There's some electric types that I have to be careful about, but the experience gains here are very much worth the risk. While I'm in there, I hit level 50, so let's check what our stats are. Yeah, yeah, the, the special is nice, but jokes aside, these stats are pretty underwhelming. The speed is high, but that doesn't matter nearly as much as the base speed, since in Gen 1, high base speed means you critically hit a lot. Unfortunately, I can't raise my base speed, so we have what we have. While I'm there, I try fighting our rival. Right away, we fly and take out Pidgeotto just fine in a few hits since all he did was miss moves. Execute hung on with the tiniest sliver from Fly, poisoned us, then went down to quick attack. Water Onyx almost hit us with a Hydro Pump early, but thankfully missed because we're spamming Fly. We're taking a lot of turns worth of damage though from Poison. Finally, the luck stops being in our favor, and we come down from Fly, we miss, and he nails a big Hydro Pump for most of our health. Bite and poison damage bring us down to 2 health, we finish him off, then we go down before we can fight Alakazam. Failing that, I tried Koga again. Coughing manages to do some damage to us, but we didn't get poisoned and it's time to deal with Muck. Right away I sand attacked him once for safety, then started attacking, but he's just using a lot of X items and disable. Quick attack got taken out of the equation, so I switched for fly, and that's when he started using minimize, but I got lucky and took him out so he never landed a hit on us. 
The second coughing hits Sludge and Smokescreen before it goes down, so we're in bad shape for Weezing. I failed Sand Attack on Weezing, and it self-destructed, taking me out. We lose on a draw, so I just have to keep trying. A few levels later, and I try again, but so many runs fail early on due to Mach. Minimize maxed with getting poisoned is brutal to deal with, and we're pretty reliant on luck in this fight. I keep trying over and over to the point that I've been leveling up from losing. Normally I save before these fights in Gen 1 and reset, since when I lose, I lose so much money. But I don't need the money that badly this run, because I was just smart and saved up all the nuggets I've been getting, so I take the experience instead. Oh by the way, people have been asking me a lot where the Youngster Joey gigs have been the last few months. He's been socially distancing himself from the challenges, don't worry, he'll be back. Finally, at level 61, Muck just never hits us for some reason, so we took him out quickly. By the time we got to Weezing, we still had full health, so although we missed our sand attack due to smokescreen, we only took exactly half of our health and damage from self-destruct, so Koka basically just forfeit the fight. I decided that I'd probably have an easier time in Blaine's fire gym than trying my luck with the rival fight, mostly because Blaine tends to fight like an idiot. Plus, the fire trainers in the gym will be great for easy experience. Once I get to Blaine, I have this absolutely baffling fight where they never land a hit on me. It's not even a case of him missing or amusing sand attack, because I didn't. He just almost never chose to use an attacking move, and when he did, it was when I was in the air using fly. I think we might have to give an award to Blaine for being the worst trainer in all of Kanto. He has no excuse to do as badly as he does with the team that he has. Finally, Rival Fival time, sub to J-Rose. This time Pidgeot only deals 12 damage, and we still one-shot Execute. Water Onyx still has a Hydro Pump for a decent chunk of damage before we took him out, and we're back to Alakazam in much better shape than last time. We ended up one-shotting him with Fly, so last is Charizard. We did a lot of damage with Fly, he hit Ember, we hit Quick Attack, but it didn't finish him off, and he yet again once decided Rage was a good move to do, so we took him out. Using Rage is basically forfeiting the fight. Immediately after this is the Sylph Co. Giovanni fight. He was harder than usual just because he had a Rhyhorn that I had to sand attack down, but none of his Pokemon were really able to deal much damage, so we won the fight just fine. Next was Sabrina in the Psychic Gym, and she was nearly a one-shot sweep if not for her Alakazam hanging on because of Reflect. She followed that up though with Psywave, and as usual, it was pathetic and did 8 damage, so we won. I can't believe Psywave is considered a reward in this gym battle. In the same town, you can get Psychic for free, which is a thousand times better. Finally, we have our last Giovanni fight. He opens up with a Rhyhorn, so I start with Sand Attack, knowing that it'll take us a while, and I use Agility once, just in case his Doug Trio later in the fight would be faster than us. Rhyhorn is mostly just missing with Horn Drill, so I'm not that worried. By the time he goes down, he hardly hurt us. Second is Dugtrio, and right away we're doing some big damage with Quick Attack, get crit for a lot of health from Slash, then finish him. I probably should have just used Fly. Nido Queen dodges Fly and uses a guard spec, so I can't mess with her accuracy. Shortly after, we get Body Slam, but due to some weird bad programming, normal types can't get paralyzed by Body Slam in Gen 1, so we just take her out with 71 health left. Nido King is next, and he starts thrashing, but we're in the air. When we land, we take massive damage, though, and we almost go down. We managed to finish him off, but we're in rough shape from all those tail whips and leers. Last is Rhydon. We sand attack, he tail whips, we sand attack again, he uses a guard spec, so I have to stop, and I start using Fly, but it's just too weak, and he hits a stomp quickly, taking us out. At level 68, everything just goes a little bit smoother, and I make it to Rhydon with double the health. But by the time I got him to red health, he finally landed a hit and took us out in one hit. I'm gonna have to just grind out attempts until I win. A few attempts later and I get this pretty good run where I didn't get tail whipped so much, so I got to ride on with about 100 health and Giovanni didn't use his guard spec to block my sand attacks until I was able to get three of them in, instead of the usual two. Because of that, he missed way more often than usual and we were able to get the win. Finally, we have one last rival fight before the Elite Four. It goes pretty much the exact same way as Rival Fival, either than that there was a Rhyhorn we had to take down, but it did just about nothing to us because of sand attack. Charizard was actually a major threat though, hitting us with both Slash and Flamethrower to bring us to only 15 health before we took him out. Honestly, I'm worried about my chances with him in the final fight. When he doesn't use Rage, he's really scary. When I get to the Elite Four, our level is pretty nice, but our stats and moves 
aren't. Let's take a look at what we can learn by TM again. The list is super limited, but I can see one clear upgrade that we can do, and that's replacing Quick Attack with Double Edge. I'm already going to be faster than everything, so I don't really need Quick Attack, and although the recoil damage is pretty bad on Double Edge in Gen 1, and the power is only 100 until Gen 2, I'm probably going to need the raw power to take down Bruno's Onyx. I go back to the Rocket Hideout and pick up TM10 to get Double Edge. I mean, after I clean out my inventory. I think I'm ready for this, though. Make your final guesses on if I can win or not. Let's do this. First is Ice Trainer Lorelei, and we instantly lose to Dugong because it's Ice type and I'm way too low of a level. Well, I honestly thought we'd get farther than that. I come back five levels higher, but I can still only get one Pokemon farther into the battle. My only choice here is to either learn Double Team or grind to a higher level. There aren't held items, and I can't get stronger attacks, nor can I cause paralysis, sleep, or confusion to try and shut them down. I decided that the best course of action is to do the slow, slow grind to level 80, and if that's not enough, then I rely on Double Team. Double Team might not be the funnest strategy, but maxing out my level is just as boring and takes longer. At level 80, I try again, but we still don't make it past Cloyster. Our special stat is terrible, and we're weak to ice moves. We can't even get past her first two Pokemon, let alone the rest. I'm gonna need Double Team. So what you're watching right now is my first attempt with Double Team, and this is why I said near the start that I might not be able to win this without a glitch. This run right now is either valid or invalid completely based on how you interpret the rules. Have you noticed that I'm doing more damage despite being the same level on this attempt? Well, it's because of Double Team, or more specifically, how Gen 1 handles stat changes. If you know J. Rose, I'm sure you already know the story. Every time our stats change, even if they were going down, the game will automatically reapply all the stat bonuses that we got from the gym badges that we have. Since this doesn't work this way in later games, this is probably a glitch, but that begs the question of where do we draw the line on glitches? So I used three double teams specifically for the evasion, but did I break a rule because it activated a glitch, even if that's not why I used the move? If I get hit by Growl, that will also boost me because of the glitch, so is the run invalid if I'm hit by a stat changing move? Because if that's true, I think every single Gen 1 run I've ever done is invalid. I don't really know where I think the line is, to be honest. So I'm just going to use only double team for the evasion and pretend like it's any other generation for the sake of my own sanity. Basically, if I would have used it in any other game at this point, I'll use it in this game at that point. I feel like that's the fairest way to do it. You know how Gen 1 is, though. You don't have to perform the glitches. It'll glitch for you. Oh, and I lost this attempt, by the way. This fight is absolutely awful. It took many, many tries of blacking out and running back, but I was stubborn and wanted to beat Lorelei without using more than three double teams because it just felt more fair to me to not use all six of them, given that there's a glitch going on, you know? Eventually, we just hardly hung on and won the fight. Second is fighting trainer Bruno. First is Onyx, so I tried double edge, just for it to not do much, and for Bruno to use an X defend. This is the best I've got though, and he just used rage, so I just kept hitting double edge until I got the knockout, losing about a quarter of my health in the process. Him on Chen and Him on Lee were both easy one shots with fly, then it was back out to another Onyx. This time though, we crit with our first double edge to do extra damage, but then we got hit by rock throw, so we had very low health as Machamp comes out, but we outspeed him and bring him to low health with fly. We probably still could have lost, but he used Leer, so we won. Third is Ghost Trainer Agatha. Gengar right away tries for Dream Eater, even though we're awake. But after landing a fly, we got confused. We were in the air when we hit ourselves, and that can actually activate a glitch that makes us invincible until we use Fly, or Dig, again. But it was the only move that we can use in the fight, so I just instantly turn off the glitch with Fly so that the glitch didn't actually do anything. We take him out, and second is Golbat. Double Edge brings it to red health, Agatha uses a super potion, then we finish it off. Haunter was a one-shot with Fly, and Arbok went down the same way that Golbat did, although our health was getting low from recoil at this point. Last is Gengar, who managed to confuse us, like the previous one, and yet again we hit ourselves. But Gengar tried for Dream Eater while we're awake yet again, so we won quickly. Fourth is Dragon Trainer Lance. Water Onyx is first, so I fly, but I can't even deal half of his health and damage. Dragon Rage takes out 40 of our own health, then we got nailed by a Hydro Pump, so although we did get the knockout, we're below half health. Dragonair used Agility twice for whatever weird reason, so I used Agility twice in return to make sure that I'm faster. 
Dragonair just missed a bunch outside of that though, so we took it out without taking a hit. A second Dragonair is out third, but it's a one-shot with a critical fly, and we're on to Aerodactyl. I used my last power point on fly, and ended up missing. Take a bit to have less than 50 health, our own double edge almost knocks us out, and a critical hyper beam finishes us. I think I'll need double team again. I tried this again with three double teams at the start, as well as an agility to make sure that the following Dragonair doesn't use it to outspeed me, because again, that's what I would do if this was any other game. This time I still have 122 health left as Aerodactyl comes out, and although it hits takedown to bring us to 62 health, we get the knockout. Last is Dragonite, and right away we do massive damage with Fly, he uses Barrier, and we just finish it with Double Edge. Finally, the Pokemon Champion. Pidgeot is first, so I take my chance to start building up my double teams, but he's using Mirror Move and building up his own evasion. That's really clever and probably an accident. I end up getting my three double teams, he starts charging for Sky Attack, and we ended up critically hitting with a double edge for a one-shot before he can get it in. Alakazam, of course, goes down in one fly, and Rhydon is still hardly getting hurt, even with the badge boost kicking in. Rhydon is tempting fate, though, because he keeps going for Tail Whip and Leer. If he hits that, our attack will end up going up more. In the end, though, he never ended up touching us. Executor's one shot with Fly, so Water Onyx is next. Yet again, though, it's mostly just going for Leer, and it never hits, so we take it out. Last is Charizard, so I double team to bring it all the way to red health. We lose a ton of health and recoil, he misses his slash, we miss our fly, he misses his fire spin, and then we finally land the finishing blow. I was getting pretty worried near the end there. That was a brutal run near the end, but I kind of knew it would be. Anytime we have a run where our type coverage is that terrible, it's going to end up being a big problem. I really hope you liked how that run was, though. I'm not sure what I'm doing for next Saturday's Pokemon Challenge yet, I've got a lot of things written down and I just don't know which one to do next. So as always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. If you guys want to see me do more challenges like this, please let me know in the comments or on Twitter. I can always use more ideas from you guys on what I should do next. Also, check out the playlist in the description to watch all of the Pokemon challenges that I've already uploaded. If you guys want to see some Pokemon stuff from me, my friend Wadigeek and I just finished a Gen 1 randomizer over on his channel, linked in the description. You can also watch myself, Wadigeek, and Goosep playing Pokemon Stadium right here on my channel. Also, come to the Twitch TV streams and tell me that this video sent you. It's always cool to hear how you found the channel. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.